Well, here we go again. Another Miller and Kressel, this time an MX-125 Series 2. So a regular MX-125 does not have a separate capacitor rectifier board. It has the capacitors on the main board and a rectifier that mounts right over here in those little four holes. But this one is the Series 2. This customer's complaint is a loud thumping sound. So before I do anything, I'm just gonna power this thing up with no load connected and look at the AC input current. I just wanna see if there's anything going on that might be suspicious. We'll go ahead and hook a voltmeter up to the speaker terminals and see is there a DC offset. I don't wanna blow anything up first. So if you notice some of the other ones, the regular 125s have a four amp slow blow fuse and this one has six amp fast blow fuses in both locations. So a little production change, I'm not sure what happened there, but let's go ahead and give this thing some juice and see what it does. Well, so far at 125 volts, I am drawing about 20 watts of AC input and probably 19 of that is the power transformer inefficiency. So I've got a voltmeter here, let's put it on DC volts. And we'll just do a quick test right here and see if we have any offset. And nope, I'm totally happy with that. No DC offset. So we'll hook speakers to it, put some audio into it, see what it's gonna do. Okay, so I do have speakers connected right here, or a speaker, I should say. And I have an MP3 player connected, so we'll power this thing on. And I heard absolutely nothing. Wow, we'll hit play. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, that's not good. All right, something seriously going on with this thing. Let me show you what's happening to the speaker. So these are the speakers I'm using to test these things. There are a couple little uh, Infinity. I think they're RS2000. I'm not sure the model number exactly. Let's power this thing on. And yeah, I'm gonna say that is probably gonna be a problem. And the audio is turned off right now. There's no audio going into this thing at all. And so, yeah, the cone should not be going in and out. There's some kind of a DC offset going on. And I don't know if I can show you the power meter or not, but let, let me get my phone. Okay, so here is the current and I'm on the 1.5 amp scale and it keeps just going almost full scale multiple times. So I think we're gonna check some caps and see what might be going on with this thing. Definitely doing a little bit of oscillation right here. So let's see if we can figure out what is happening with this unit. Okay, so I thought I'd start by checking the main filter caps right here. And these are Samsung caps. Wow, really right now? Samsung caps? 10,000 at 63 volts. Doesn't that Samsung logo look remarkably like Samwa caps that killed the Samsung TVs back in the early 2000s? Anyhow, let's get the ESR meter out and we'll check these caps and see how they check. Let's test lead integrity first. And I got 0.00. .00. The first cap checks 0 0.02. Once again, leads 00, 0 and 0 0.08 on that one. I'm not liking that a bit, but I don't think that's going to cause the problem. I think there's gonna be another issue on the main board, but I'm gonna recommend that we go ahead and replace these Samsung caps with some better quality, maybe United Chemicon or Nichicons, something other than Samsung, which looks remarkably like Samwa caps. So let's go ahead and pull the board off and we'll check all the caps on it as well. Okay, here we go. So here's a one microfarad cap. A few ohms will be okay, 3.9. That's okay for a one. This is a 100. I like to see like half an ohm or less and that one is perfect. Here's a 10.9, I'm great with that. Another 10.9, I'm great with that. Another 100.5, .5, 
just a hair high for my liking, but still acceptable. Another 10, 1.1, it's probably just fine. And a 100 at 0.4, and another 100 at 0.4. So I kind of like all those. Not really seeing any issues other than that one main power supply filter cap that is at 0 0.08. Like to see a little bit lower than that. So I just realized that I missed two capacitors on this board. So there's a one microfarad bipolar cap right here. And it tests 3.1, 3.2 ohms. I'm very good with that. And another one microfarad bipolar cap. 3.3, 3.4. I'm very good with that. So I spoke via email with Ken Kressel of Miller and Kressel, and he believes that the whole problem is oxidized pots. And he may be 100% correct on this unit. I want to go ahead and just replace all of the small capacitors, the 10s and the 100s, just because if you notice the date right here, April 3rd of 1998, this thing is getting up there in age. It's 23, 24 years old at this point. So I think just to be safe, we should go ahead and change out all of these caps. And like I normally do, I'll add silicone RTV, especially to these resistors that have no support whatsoever. They're just allowed to flop around. And I'm surprised they haven't fatigued with the base. Of course, this customer may not overdrive this thing, but every one of them is loose. And I don't know why they didn't use some kind of RTV, hot glue, celastic, anything to hold these things down. But I think I'll go ahead and replace all the yellow caps, which are 100s at 63, and then all the small caps, which are these guys, which are 10s at 63. We'll go ahead and change all those out. As far as the bipolar caps, which, is, which are this one and this one, and then uh, this one is a one microfarad at 50 volt cap. Uh, probably go ahead and change that one. I don't have any one microfarad 50 volt bipolar caps in stock. I probably could put a couple of 2.2 microfarad caps back to back. And effectively that would be 1.1 microfarads bipolar. But they test perfectly fine. I just want to get this guy's subwoofer restored. Now you notice I do have the Samsung caps out of the unit right here and I don't have any 10,000 at 63 volt caps in stock. I do have a couple of good used 12,000 at 71 volt caps in stock, which I will donate to the customer if he chooses to go that route. Otherwise I can go ahead and order a couple of 10,000 at 63 if he wants brand spanking new caps. Now the caps that I have that are 12,000 at 71, they were pulled out of another receiver that I scrapped out, which was only about six years old. So they've got pretty low hours on them as far as I can tell. So let's go ahead and replace all the caps, clean the pots, and see if Ken was 100% correct.
Okay, so all the caps have been changed with the exception of the two one microfarad bipolar caps that tested just fine. I did not clean the punch yet. I just want to power this thing on and see if it's going to come up good or if we still have an issue. So here we go, power on. And we still have a problem. Oh my goodness. Well, let's shoot some deoxid into these things and see if it makes any kind of a difference. Okay, a little deoxid F5. Okay, once again, just a bit of pretension on these connectors, just so they make a very positive connection to the circuit board. We just want to bend these in ever so slightly. All right, I think that's going to be fine. Don't even worry about this. If you push it too far, once you plug it together, it's going to push it right back out and it's going to have excellent contact. Now on to the one connector on the circuit board. Incidentally, I did look at the solder connections and it appears these things were hand soldered by Miller and Kressel as of the production time. Well, I've got to give kudos to Ken Kressel at Miller and Kressel. After some deoxid, this thing is working absolutely perfectly. Once again, remember I only have little six inch speakers connected to this, but it is shaking the video lights. That's the rattling that you hear. This thing's got a lot of punch. That is definitely for sure. Okay, so all the large components have had silicone RTV added to them. I've retentioned the Molex connectors, cleaned the base level pot, cleaned the crossover level pot, changed all the caps with the exception of those two one microfarad non-polar caps that I did not have in stock, changed the two big filter caps on the power supply board with some good quality used ones. Now it's going to be up to the customer whether he wants me to order new ones or just keep those two used ones in there. It's totally going to be up to him. But anyhow, there it is. Let's power it up right now. There it is playing. It's shaking the lights, has so much bass. But anyhow, that's gonna be it. The repair on the Miller and Kressel MX125. This is the version two subwoofer. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're done, they hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. If you do send me a message on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, please be aware it might be weeks or even months before I respond. I rarely check those messages. Please, if you want to contact me, use the Gmail address only. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everyone, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone, have a great day. Once again, thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.